Philippians chapter 3, 7 to 9. It says, but whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. And indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as a rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him. This is the difference between the worldly meditation and the holy meditation that we do. They do abandon their things, and they do consider everything as rubbish for their sake, for my sake. And as they throw away, they won't find me and what is mine. And they might suffer all to gain me. So the meditation, the word recommends you to do through yoga or meditation or deep breathing, it's all for the sake of you. You may rubbish things and you may throw away things and you may abandon things for your sake. Well, there's one thing that you don't really know though. You that you will ultimately face is you Who's in Genesis chapter 3? Under the control of Satan, under the oppression of sin, under the power of hell, you will only find you who is really selfish, and you'll find you who can only live for yourself. You will see yourself, and you will be very disappointed, and you will see yourself, and you'll be very discouraged. And you will see yourself, and you'll be dismayed. This is you, you will see ultimately. You will see yourself that you are only the one running for physical material. You will only see that you are the one only care about your physical lives. That you only care about your money. You only care about your success. You only care about your education. Even as remnants in the church, you will see yourself in the world that you're living and following the world. Although we want to be a disciple and follower of Christ. Christ. You know who will see? You will see you who will only run for your own kingdom. Although you are remnants, although you're children of God, you will see yourself, you're running for your kingdom, not for God's kingdom. This is what you will ultimately see. You know what will happen when you see yourself? This is what's going to happen. You will see that you are following the method of the world. You are listening to the voice of the world. And you are only enjoying the culture of this world. You know what else you will see? You will only see yourself that you are bounded in the destiny. Something you cannot change. This is what they are doing their meditation for. They want to find themselves, but they will be lost again. And this is when they empty themselves. That's the best state where Satan can overpower you. But why, we, why do we do the meditation then? What's the difference between their meditation and our meditation? We may do the same thing. They will sit at the edge of the chair. They'll have their hands on their knee and they'll pray with deep breathing prayer. Inhale with your nose. Exhale with your mouth. But what are they missing? They're missing the content to fill their empty heart. Why are we doing this meditation? Are we following the word? But, or is it what God has given to us from the beginning? He has given us the word to meditate for the sake of Christ. And for him, we may lose all. And we may lose all to gain Christ. And to be found in Christ. So what's the goal of our meditation? It's not me. 
being found at all. I will be found at the end. But what we do is this. We lose all for the sake of Christ. And we may abandon all to gain Christ. And for us to be found in Christ. And you will see this. You will see that your spiritual state. Has been changed already. How does it change? It's been changed. This is what Joseph confessed. The Lord is with Joseph. In slavery, the Lord is with Joseph. It's not the situation or your position that define who you are. It's nor the condition that makes who you are. It is God who makes you who you are. And the Joseph's Identity is an identity that God is with Joseph. I'm the person. God is with me. God guides me. He works in me. This identity can never be altered regardless of your situation. Many times we are so lost in our condition. and We let the condition define us. If your condition is really depressed, you're defining yourself as a depressed person. If you're getting all F in your grade, you're defining yourself as a failure. If you can go to better college, you define yourself as what? Loser. We let the condition define us when Joseph was defined by the word of God. He was found before the presence of God. In slavery, the Lord was with Joseph. In jail, the Lord was with Joseph. When he was successful, Condition doesn't matter. The Lord was with Joseph. Our identity is unchangeable. So our identity is eternal that is given to you. So your spiritual state is now being changed. Because we lose all for the sake of Christ. And we abandon all to gain Christ. And finally we are found in Christ. Are you in loneliness? What did David confess in Psalm chapter 23 and 1 and 4? He confessed, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. There's nothing that I want. And this is what he confessed. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of the death, I will fear no evil for you are. God is with me. Your rod and your step, they comfort me. This is our identity. This is our spiritual state. That is unchangeable. That cannot be compromised. This is who we are. Are you playing game? So are you game addict? No. God is with me. I shall not want. Even in the valley of death, the Lord is my shepherd. I fear no evil. Are you so obsessed with drugs? So are you drug addict? No. I am the most precious child of God. This is our identity. Am I in a place where I feel so lonely? Do you feel like you're alone on this earth that no one can understand you? You know what David confessed? I shall not want anyone anything because the Lord is with me. That is so enough for you. When you find Christ, when you earn Christ, when you gain Christ, when you're found in Christ, you will know Christ is enough, so I am enough. We are filled with what is completed. We are, we are incompleted, yet we are filled with what is completed, which is Christ. He's perfect and complete. He's enough that we are filled with Christ alone. What did Eliza confess? In crisis, before death, he couldn't hear anything from anyone, even in the midst of a wind, midst of fire, he couldn't see the work of God. But he started to hear a low whisper of God. What do you wish to hear today? What are we panting for? What we wish to hear today, we want to hear the low, low whisper of God. 
Listen to his voice, what he's telling you. Listen to his word, what he's telling you again. Jesus is a Christ, the answer to all. You are my child. I am with you. I am guiding you. I work in you. Let no one judge who you are when there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Are you scared? Are you in fear? Listen to a low whisper of God. Jesus is a Christ answer to all. Yesterday at Mission Home, you know, one of the room, uh, one of our kids were about to sleep and somebody knocked the window twice like this. And she was so scared. And she was, she was, about, to, she was about to tell us that somebody knocked, but we were having our uh, ramen. So, it, I mean, we were look so happy and so enjoyable, so she couldn't tell us what she felt, what she heard. And she heard it one more time, somebody knocking the window. And guess, guess whom they want to go out and seek and find who this person is when everyone's girls except me. <laughs> and they know I've done Taekwondo, right? You do Taekwondo, but your Taekwondo is powerless before gun or, gun or knife. You know that, right? But they still want me to go out. And they don't say, Pastor, can you go out and find? They don't say, but if you look at their eyes, Everyone expect me to go out. And that's when I was so desperate for Andre. Where is Andre? <laughs> He's not here today. So who's with me when Andre is not with me? God is with me. So I went to the backyard. You know how, how, how much, you can imagine how much I was scared. I had imagined so many things. Maybe this guy's hiding behind something with a gun or a knife. And I went to the backyard. First thing, I yelled at my wife, turn on the light on the backyard. And I was, it was because I was scared, to be honest. And she turned the light on. And, you know, our backyard looks, it's like this. That there's a corner here, this side, and this side. So I went to this backyard and looked this way. I was so happy there was no one. You can't imagine how much I was so happy. And when I came back, I was, I was acting like I was so bold and I was so courageous that I told them, no one's here. I found out no one's here. If anyone would be here, I would beat them up, right? But you know what my wife told me? My wife asked me, yobo, honey, did you check this side? So I'm like, I didn't. But I told her I did, because why? I was super scared to go this side. And then I was just looking this side through my window, and I told my wife, yeah, I looked it up, but no one's there. But she already knew I didn't go. So her voice was like, yeah, 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 yeah. You went there. Yeah, 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 right? And that hurts my pride. So I'm like, okay, I'll go, I'll go. Andre's not here with me today. Who's with me, guys? God is with me. So I confess, Jesus is Christ, the answer to all. Jesus is Christ, the answer to all. And I was thinking, if anyone there waiting for me with a gun and if I die today, well, I die for the remnants. So I might go to heaven. So I went to the other side and with my flashlight on my phone and I shined the darkness, this corner. No one was here. Now our question is this. No one's there who knocked the window there. That's even more scary, right? Who's knocking our window? We were checking our camera, and we, the camera didn't catch anyone. There's no one. Then who knocked the door, window? And we came up to saying, maybe it was demon then. Maybe it was devil, the evil spirit. And our remnants was so scared. And she's like, if it is really the demon, or devil, I don't know what to do. And that's when we confess. We have Christ. Do you have no one around you? Andre can be with you 24-7. 
right? Andrea is not even living in Mission Home anymore. God is with us. Do you know what they did, the remnants did? They texted Andre right away to bring the lock to lock the gate. Do we call it humanism or do we call it gospel? We might call it humanism and gospel. Thing is, everyone look for Andre. Our house members all look for Andre. We need Christ. And Christ is given to us. And Andre told me this today. There was Andre's room last month, and Andre said, Pastor, every morning, in very in the morning, 3 or 4 a.m., I woke up in the middle of the night. I was scared to go to sleep, and the gate was always open a little. All right, guys, what should we hold on to today? Even Andre was scared. Andre needed Christ. Then why should we ask Andre to be with us? We need not Andre, we need Christ. Amen? So guys, I told our remnants who heard the knock. It was only her who heard it. This is how much we need a Christ. We need a Christ to our bones. We need our Christ to our marrow. We need our Christ to our joints. We need Christ in every part of our life. Every part of our organs, every part of our body, we need to be imprinted and rooted in, deeply in Christ. What did Paul confess when he was in jail? Look at Philippians chapter 112. Instead of him complaining, Lord, why did you put me here? He says, brothers, what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. What has happened to you is only to advance the gospel in your life and let this gospel flow into the world. We don't need, we don't need Andre, guys. We need Christ. We don't need money. We need Christ. It's not the education that will guard you and protect you. Even yesterday, one of our deacons had a meeting with her friend. This is what she confessed. She confessed every night at her apartment, whenever she goes, goes to her laundry, she sees a woman, which is a demon. And every time she goes to laundry, she sees a different ghost. So what she did is this. She had a roommate to live in her apartment too. But roommate didn't come to her house because he, she started to date her boyfriend. So she started to sleep over her boyfriend's house when she came to become alone again. She's so scared every night. When you really at a death of, at, at the edge of your life, you know there's no one that can help you. You will know there's nothing that can assist you. But Christ alone. If, you, if anyone stands before you to kill you, guess how much your education will help you? Guess how much money you give it to them and they will run away from you? Guess how much career they can change your life? Nothing can protect you from the act of Satan. Word must be restored in your life. So the Christ must be restored. So what is God doing? Why did God brought you to nothing? Why did God allow you here today? This is what God does. He is restoring the covenant. He wants you to hold on to only the covenant. Why are you here at worship today? He wants you to hold on to only the covenant. He's restoring only the covenant from nothing where no one can help you. There's no one you can rely on. There's nothing you can entrust. Yet Christ alone, the covenant alone, 
is with you, waiting for you, and he's coming to you. When Adam and Eve left God, guess what you'd say to Adam and Eve? You'd blame on them. You'd accusing them. You'd what? You'd bring them all the problems. You'd tell them you are the cause of all the problems. And you will abandon them. That's what's happening to our remnants. When somebody can do better, we judge them. We blame them. We accuse them. When God alone came to them. Where are you, Adam? You know what God heard? Adam replied him back. Because of you, the woman you gave me, I became this way. This is what many remnants are complaining today. Because of you, I'm so failed. Because of you, I'm in the low. Because of you, I've lost all. You know what God says? He knows who's inputting wrong mindset and wrong thoughts on Adam and Eve. The woman's offspring will crush the serpent's head. Why are we here today? Why are you at the bottom? Why did you why did you quit your school? Why are you suspended from school? Why are you kicked out of your job? Why are you always here at the bottom? Is God failing you? Is God restoring the covenant? One of the elders that I know, one of his arm was cut off when he was in 20s. Since then, he became alcoholic. When he was 45, that's when he got to find God in his life. You know what he confessed after he found God in his life? This is what he said. People say I lost my arm. I say I gained God in my life. That is gospel, guys. God is restoring the covenant in me. When should we enjoy this covenant? Every morning, every night. Let it be the time to restore your covenant. Let the covenant rule your heart in the morning. Let the covenant dwell in you richly in night. Let the covenant dictate your thoughts. Let the covenant destroy the work of devil that works through fear that works through depression that works through anxiety that works through worries let the covenant defeat the work of the devil every morning and every night let the covenant does its job in your life may you learn how to rely your life on covenant alone every morning every night even when you play game when you're facing crisis and difficulties, let Christ be the Christ in your life. Your day and your night is really blessed. It's the day and night that should be blessed. And your every day is really blessed with the covenant alone. Find your day in the covenant. Don't let Satan waste your hour anymore. Don't waste your time to hate someone. Let the covenant work in you. About un regarding Andrea one more time. Yesterday, Andrea posted a one post on Instagram. We were all praying. We were all about to listen to the message. It was Andrea posting, beating up someone. And everyone was so worried. And he, this is what he said, the old time. Like the old times? This is what he wrote it on his his Instagram, and Unji, Angelica, they were so worried that Andre beat up someone. But it was all fake. He didn't beat up anyone. It was just a fake. And Angelica called Andre, what did you do? And Andre's like, oh, it was a nothing. See, you're worried because of fake thing. Many times. 
most of your worries is out of fake. There's things you don't even need to worry about. 99% of your worries never happen in your life. But we are so caught up in worries and anxious. What do we hold on to? Christ. When? Morning and night. Night, when you don't hold on to Christ, that's when you hold on to your worries, your boredom, your loneliness, and your depression, your anxieties. These are all fake. Hold on to the truth. Every morning and every night. How? Starting from where you are. Starting from nothing. Hold on to the word. Do you believe it is because you don't have money that you need the money today? That it is you don't have money that you got to work part-time job right away? No. You need to restore what is fundamental in your life. May you have your time to restore fundamental things when you're at nowhere. This covenant is the beginning of the answer. I'm sorry, Andrea, I'm talking about you a lot. But conclusion, I'm going to talk about you one more time. He's bringing me a lot of story of Christ. Covenant is the beginning of the answer. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 43, 19 to 21. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild beast will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people. The people whom I form for myself, that they might declare my praise. This is what it does in where you are. Do you guys believe in this? This has been proclaimed before they were captivated by Babylon. He already gave them the covenant already. This is what I will do. I will make a river in the desert, which you believe impossible. Nothing is impossible for me. For my sake, for my kingdom, I will restore you that you are formed for myself to bring me the praise of mine will be restored in Christ alone. Let's hold on to the covenant. Jeremiah chapter 33, 1 to 9. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah a second time while he was still shut up in the court of the guard. You're shut up in your own room. You're shut up in the situation. You're shut up in your condition. Thus says the Lord who made the earth, the Lord who formed it to establish it. The Lord is his name. Call to me. I will answer you and will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. He's not the empty God. He's not the vain God. He's God who formed the earth and established it. He's telling you, urging you, saying it to you, call to me. I will answer unsearchable things. You can never imagine. I have your future. My future is in his hand. Do we believe in this? So God aligns our life into his covenant journey. Look at Zoe, chapter 2, 28. Through us, through our adults, through your life, through your future generation, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pull out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old man shall dream dreams, and your young man shall see visions. Your old man is really old. Your son and daughters are so impossible. Your next generation don't even study well. But what does God say regarding your future? They will speak prophecy. They will have dream of dreams. And they will bring this gospel to the whole world. 
This is our future guaranteed in our lives. If you can open your Bible, let's look at Job chapter 121. Job chapter 121. Nate, I came from my mother's womb. Nate, shall I return? The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He knows when to give. He knows when to take away. The time is in God's hand. God is the master of your time. He's the master of your season. He knows when to give. He knows when to take away. Let's look at Job chapter 42, verse 5. I had heard of you by hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. This is the beginning of the Job, his spiritual state. He still, he knows He's the one gives, he's the one take away. Yet at the end, finally he confessed, finally, I've only heard about you, but now I see you. He never made mistakes. He's complete. So I told you guys last week, you're not God's mistake. You're God's masterpiece. He knows when to reveal, when to hide. So, about Andre. <laughs> Yesterday, Angelica sent me a picture of a park. And she sent me a picture of a tennis court. And she asked me, Pastor, do you know this tennis court? And I'm like, well, like, how can you expect me to know all the tennis courts around my area? So I'm like, no, I don't really know. And she told me, this is right next to your house. And I was so surprised. Wow, Angelica, thank you. You, find, you found my tennis court where I can play. And the better thing is this. They have playground for my kids. They have basketball court. So it's not only for my tennis. Whoever lives in Michigan, we all can go together, even without car. We can simply walk there. And Angelica told me this. Andre knew this park when he was here for whole entire months. And I asked him, then why didn't Andre tell me first? And Angelica told me, because he knew you will make them go to park and do certain things. So Andre, Andre was hiding the secret of the park for an entire time. I called Andre, Andre, why did you, didn't you tell me? And he's like, because I know you will tell us to do things. So I told Andre, I will beat you up. Although I cannot, I will try to beat you up. And Andrew's like, yeah, yeah, and he, we hung off, right? <laughs> so I was mad. I mean, I wouldn't get mad, right? But I was like, oh, my God. It's been, why finally? I should have found this park already so that I can enjoy my tennis. I can bring my kids. I wouldn't, worry, I wouldn't need to worry about anything, right? So last night, finally, for, for the first time, I went to the park. I thought it was Andre hiding the secret for me. But it was God who had revealed the mystery of the park that day. There was a guy sitting on, what's the kune in English? Swing. He was, there was a guy sitting on a swing by himself. And my son was running towards him. And I thought it was dangerous for my son to approach the weird guy, right? He was sitting on a swing like, like this. So I thought in the first place, I thought he's on high. So I thought it's really dangerous in night. By himself on swing, doing like swing like like this. He's, he's really like I was. I thought it was dangerous, but um, I come to think, why did God allow me to be here today? So I asked him, if he's on, if he's high, why not me sharing the gospel? So I asked him, how are you? Where are you from? And he says he's from Myanmar, and he's PK just like me, pastor's kid. 
So I thought in the first place, because he's PK, he might not listen to the gospel. He might act like he knows everything. And in the first place, I thought he must have assurance of salvation. So after saying hi, after knew he's a pastor's kid, I didn't talk to him much. But after five minutes, I come to think, I was a pastor's kid when I was 18 without the assurance of salvation. I was in depression. I quit my school. I didn't even have any future. So I come to ask, do you know how to read Myanmar? Because he can't speak English that well. I, I brought him Myanmar evangelism material that's in my phone. And he started to read it. He started to read it. He accepted Christ. And this is what he said. Tonight, I was here because I was really depressed. And I pray to God by myself saying, God, please send anyone to help me. I thought I have, my life is not worth to live. And even he said he tried to commit suicide before. Yet he woke up the next day. That's when he realized, oh, I'm alive. He was really down. He was a person just like me. Did God, did Andre hide the secret for me or did God didn't let him talk to me? So do I need to hate Andre that he hide the park for me? No. Since then, I, come to, I was really thankful to Andre. If he told me ahead, I would have been the, to the park many, many times. So maybe yesterday might not be the day I would go. But because it was revealed Yesterday, the perfect time, he allowed me to go. He allowed me to meet this guy named Ronald. Ronald. And we're having Bible study every Wednesday, 7 p.m. from now. He lives really close to my house. God has control in everything. He's a sovereign Lord. He knows when to give. He knows when to take. What he does in you, restoring the covenant. Be with me, I'm with you. Nothing's a problem, I can take care of you. So let the word of God be restored. Let the covenant restored in you. Wherever you are, wherever, you, whatever you do, in any season and in any time, don't you know it is God who's leading you, who's guiding you? Restore the covenant. You may forget, he will come to you, remind you one more time. Begin where you are. If it's nothing, that's where we begin to restore the covenant. Let's start our life as a new creation with a new thing in our life. Let's not hold on to things in the world. Hold on to things in the Bible. Let's hold on to the Christ alone and let him recreate our life. Let's have a time of praise. Your word. And as we sing this song together, really let it be your confession of faith. And as we sing this together, let the word we just listened to be reminded in our hearts. And may the prayer to be take to be uh, may the prayer take place in your life. Let's have a time of prayer with the praise, your word. How I long to hold your word, O oh Lord, deep within my soul. Lord, let your word you now impart. Speak to me in my heart, hear, O oh Lord. Lord, I long to give my everything. All to you I bring. All to you I bring. Lord, let your word take full control over me, taking me where you want me. There I'll be. To that place I'll go Following your word 
Your word is my strength. Your word is my sword. Your word, only your word, can revive the whole world. Your word, the true light. Your word, my delight. Your Only your word, I will. 
Father God, thank you for calling us here. We are called to the place where you need us. That here where we are, we want to be found and we want to gain and we want to give all for the sake of Christ. If we are where we are is a place of desolate. If we are in the midst of wilderness, may you remind us your covenant and help us to know that you are with us every day, every single hour. Father, isn't it you that fulfilled your covenant? So Lord, may every morning, every night be the time to restore your covenant. Let you bless my morning and my night with your covenant. And bless us, bless us, so that we may align our lives on the covenant journey. Are we in the midst of desert? Didn't you promise us you'll make the river? Are we shut up in the condition and because of situation, are we so discouraged? Didn't you tell us, call to me, you will make unsearchable things. Isn't it you who gives us covenant and dream and vision? Father, we confess it is you who gives us. It is you who takes away. It is you who's the master of time in our season. So Lord, we confess and we pray. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And we confess in our fear. We confess in our depression. We confess in our failure. Jesus is a Christ the answer to all. Let you be the covenant in our hearts. Let you be the covenant and that flows through us to the world. And through us, Lord, bring the transformation to our family. Bring true healing to our work. And raise some throughout the whole world. And we give all glory to you. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.